Hi there. So I've been spending a couple of hours on the new Bubble Mobile Native Editor and it's really, really fantastic. You can make something like this in like 20, 30 minutes if you know how it works with swipe actions, delete, with this modal at the bottom, different tab navigations. Making all of this in the previous way would have taken time just to set the structure, the page, the groups, the collapsing groups, the navigation, the bottom floating group, the navigation, all of it would have taken so much time. And straight out of the box, I was able to get so much, like all the infrastructure was all laid out. I'm going to cover some basic introduction and some differences between the web app part of Bubble and the mobile app part of Bubble. Keep in mind, this is a beta at the moment, so stuff will change, but I'm fairly sure that things that I'm about to cover are going to be fairly, they're fairly foundational in general. For those of you who are new here, my name is Zubair. I've been running a bubble agency for about four and a half years now. We've helped more than a hundred plus founders. We're software engineers at heart and we bubble all day, every day. So let's get started. The first key thing to understand is the concept of views. Okay. So instead of pages like what would we used to do? We would have a single page and then we'd have groups, 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 and collapse and show hide. Now that all that is made easier because of views. Now each view, think of each view is that single group that you would make. So in this particular app, I've got the, this view, I've got this view with list and I've got this view here. And I've also got this one here. So, now in the bubble editor, what does that look like? All of these were in, before I would have to make one page and then have groups and groups and collapse and show hide. Now it's easy because all I have to do is just make one. I just add a new mobile view and it's done. The, the header, the footer, the nav, it's all there already. So if I have open as the generate view, each view has different properties. So you can have the view types scrollable, not scrollable. So not scrollable would be suitable for pages like the sign up login page, more like the align to parent stuff. Scrollable, which is the regular, this scrollable section, the inner section is scrollable. The vertical list, this is vertical list and the section list. So there are different types of views. This is what we would used to do. We would have a group and then a repeating group, then we'd have a group and something else. So here now it makes it easy. Every view has its own kind of like a separate section and the workflows are very easy and nested. It's, it's very straightforward in that aspect. So apart from views, navigation is the other element. So you get navigation out of the box and navigation in mobile was hard. So there are a few, let's, let me look at this example. So you've got a cricket bat, a table. So this particular view and you go back to this whole list. So after generation is done, it will go into a the view and fiddling with the navigation and back. So here's the chair. Now I want, I don't want to see the f header footer in depth, but the phone can press the back button. The phone can have a back button and there's this top nav or sometimes the bottom back, or this is, this is my app, this back button, this is my app back button. So now clicking back and going here, sometimes you would have to add lots of overlays on just the back button because where did I come from? I went from the generate pathway or I went from this pathway. I went from this pathway, which will go back to this section. So navigation is out of the box. Let me show you what it looks like. So on the, on the page, I keep calling it page on the view. We can sh see at the bottom, see this one show tab bar include as a tab item. Okay. So you can enable disable the tab bar and also include or not include it at the bottom. So let me try and actually do one thing. Let me show you what it looks like on the image gen page. On the image gen page, I don't have a tab bar at the bottom. You can add, click show tab bar. Then I don't have this view or page on the tab item. If I click include as a tab item, uh, that's it. I, I'm here. All I need to do is change the icon and change the label. And that's it. All my uh, navigation options is done and clicking is also there. It navigates by itself. It navigates to the right view by itself. Very slick, very easy as well. So I'm just going to remove this. Before we go any further, my goal is to reach 5,000 subscribers and I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. 
So the other conceptual thing to understand is there's a new type of navigation. So previously in the web app mode, you would have the go to page. We would use the URL parameters or the states to kind of like collapse show hide groups. Now we have the go to view and it, ha it, uh, it supports two approaches, stack or modal. Note on mobile, the, the phone has a back button and there's known back areas. So with stack, people expect back to go sequentially, making all that in web app mode harder, unusually harder. Here with just, you just, you, uh, it's a very simple one. If I show you a go to page, all I had to do was just go to view and navigation type stack and what's the target view and what's the data source I'm passing. Uh, and that's it. It would just you use the stack and the back buttons would be totally fine. Same from the other side. So if I go list and I see the swipe action, I just go to view. That's the modal type. Okay. So note the difference here. Let me show you the difference. This modal, I see this bottom bar here. Okay. If I change it to stack, let me show you. So this is a full, pro like a whole section navigation happened. It wasn't a modal navigation, okay? Uh, the back will still work. It's just the navigation type went from modal to, so, so it's, it's just, there's a difference between the, on the phone, it will be, I think, a bit easier to see. Maybe I just didn't refresh it. So on a phone, it, the difference will be easier to see. So the menu remains, and this is just a bit more, it's, it's a focused experience, like a pop-up. I think the word used here is like, a scoped experience that requires the full screen, but you still like the back action and other things it's opened as a modal. So there's different types here. Opening it as a stack is totally fine. It's just like, it's a whole clean experience as well. So the new paradigm here is the, the bottom menu doesn't appear because I have in my image gen, I don't have the bottom menu here. I have not clicked show tab item. So views as a concept, really lovely navigation, go to tab, go to view the, the, the built in out of the box tab sections, all really good, all really good. The next thing that I'd like to cover will probably be components. So note here in the list one. So if you go back and click this list, this particular list, is it's kind of like a repeating group. If you would, uh, in the web app mode, you would have a group which would collapse, then a repeating group inside it. The top is different, the bottom, you fiddle with the floating group in the menu. Here, all I had to do was just add a new mobile view, call it something, list two, and just mark it as this is a list, okay? That's all, all I do is this is the type vertical list, and that's it. I've got my list item already, okay? If I want to add a, I click here, I select image gen, no, generated images. I do the, it's kind of like a repeating group already built in. There's no kind of, so current items prompt. And all I have to do is in, show it in the tab bar, include it as the bottom. And now I've got it in the bottom footer, like in, literally in three minutes and what one minute I've got a new section with a repeating group and a list view already built in. So now you can imagine that all this would have taken hours before just adding a new section. Now, if I want to like add swipe actions, it's easy peasy here. It's swipe action, swipe action, and I can just change the colors. Let me just like, so if I had to change the swipe actions, easy peasy. And that's it all. Uh, so it, it just like make the workflow. All this would have been super hard in the previous, in the web app mode, lots of stuff built in out of the box. So the list view is kind of like a repeating group on steroids. And then you get all these other different options about the separators and everything, the scroll, and you can also have list headers and list footers which adds empty areas at the top and the bottom. So you also have the list header and the list footer areas. You can easily add buttons to the header of the list and that'll just appear in two minutes here at the top. Oh, so I've got a list with an add button at the top or at the bottom, depending on the UX paradigm, because both sides are something which is often requested. So this just makes the whole kind of like 
a scope a view with a list and an add button in like one minute. So straightforward, so easy. The third thing I want to cover really quickly is sheets. This is a pretty, pretty interesting one. It's like, so let me show you what it is looks like in here. So see this one, all this is called a sheet. Trying to mimic this type of UX before, add a floating group, you had a show, animate, show, hide, pass stuff. The, the clicks here would get weird. The blur here would get weird. It would be really hard in a web app mode to make this type of very normal UX on mobile. Now all you get, you just get this out of the box. It's a new component. If I go to list, it was really easy. It's kind of like the group focus. And all I had to do was just place it here. And then it's, yeah, it's kind of like a group focus. And you've got all these options about what is the other backdrop color? How much is it blurred? If I just use a different color. So that just changed the blur percentage at the top. And it's all overall pretty nice. So that's this. So now you have the lovely kind of blurred, slight blurred feature. It's like, are you sure you wish to delete? And so all you, ha all I had to do was place the sheet, pass the data sources, click like this here. Now how to navigate on the sheet. That's very easy. If I click out and I click on this, I just edit the workflow here. You use the show hide. So instead of show group or uh, hide group, you just you show a sheet element and that automatically has that new UX. I can't even click out here. So yeah, so sheet automatically shown and display data. So I pass the current module, the current gen image and it just deletes it. Very straightforward and very easy. So this simple UX would take hours to fine tune, lay down these groups, lay down all this sheet. It would take hours to do this. And now it's just so much easier, so much easier this way. So now I've covered views, I've covered navigation, I've covered sheets, stack modal, and there's a whole world here. There's a whole world here on gestures that I haven't explored yet. Tap, long press, gesture, device resources, camera. The last thing I can talk about a little bit is about preview. This preview is really good. You can kind of like tune the sizes a little bit as well, which is important. See, no, I'll show you a difference here. See this all generated images. Here is your image. Now this works nicely on pixel seven, but on iPhone, not really. So now uh, again, this is a web preview. I'm fairly sure this chop will happen on real phones as well. So, but yeah, again, you have to test on a real phone and for testing on a real phone, there is a, a bubble go app only on iOS at the moment. Android version is probably going to come soon and yeah, you access it through the test flight link and then you can just actually use the app, which would be hard in other wrappers as well It's like actually opening the app, test flight, the whole thing. It's just a whole experience altogether. Now, one last thing I can cover is we share the backend. Okay. Now that's really powerful. If all I have to do is make another page on the web side, so web list, and all I have to do is like, it's the same backend, same web part. And then all I do is the usual, the usual repeating group with the, with the images generated. And it's, it's the same backend shared here, which makes it super easy, super convenient. And this is something like, which makes it even more. So you've got, so it makes it super convenient that we share the same backend. If I open the, so if I generate an image here, it will instantly appear on the other side as well. It's we're sharing the same backend workflows. If you use backend workflows, it's totally fine to share and we can make very custom different views on both sides. Makes it super easy to share this. And you have one last feature I can cover before wrapping up this video and I haven't explored it yet. It is the web view. So you can have a mini section of a regular web view in your mobile app part. So I haven't explored it yet because the web preview, it doesn't show it. It doesn't show here and I have to actually install it on the app to make it work. And I had ran into a snag with the app. Again, this is a beta. So we're testing. I reported a bug already about something. So this, this is definitely a beta and this is all going to come, uh, but 
super excited about it super fast navigation boilerplate i was able to like if you know what you're making 30 minutes quick simple small app done because all the navigation boilerplate everything which would be super hard i remember for one app we actually bought a template and the sole purpose for buying the template was just the boilerplate the footer navigation the sections the collapsible sections everything it was that, that was the whole purpose of the template so that was it. I hope you guys found that really useful. If you want me to cover a specific thing in a video, drop it in the comments below. Any questions, anything, this is an area I'm going to be looking at super closely in the next few weeks and really excited to see what we can build using Bubble Mobile. Thanks. Bye.